Horror movies often offer us more than just thrills and jump scares. Some of our favourite horror movies have deeper messages that might not be entirely visible at first glance, but make themselves more apparent the harder you look. These are the top 5 darkest horror movie theories. Let's jump in. Coming in at 5 we have Donnie Darko's message. Now I understand that Donnie Darko is definitely on the cusp of the horror genre, with it being considered more of a psychological thriller than anything else, but this theory is too good not to include, so here we are. Released in 2001 and directed by Richard Kelly, Donnie Darko stars the likes of Jake Gyllenhaal, Jenna Malone, Drew Barrymore, Patrick Swayze and Maggie Gyllenhaal, with the movie following Donnie, a troubled teen who escapes a bizarre accident which saw a plane engine crash landing on top of his home. Following this accident, he begins to see visions of Frank, a mysterious figure in a bunny costume who informs Donnie that the world will end in 28 days, and manipulates Donnie to commit several crimes. The movie does quite a number on the brain, with it sometimes being difficult to figure out what exactly is going on, if Donnie was dead or if the entire thing was a dream. Many fans of the movie have theorised though that it might be a message about driving under the influence, and there's many hints to this throughout the movie. At one point in the movie, there is a Halloween carnival which is sponsored by MAD, which is Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Not only that, but one character, Gretchen, is also killed by a drunk driver in the movie. And when director Richard Kelly was asked about these subtle hints, he stated that he was against drunk driving, and if viewers wanted to interpret the movie as an ad against drunk driving, they could. Before we jump into number 4, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, it really helps us out a lot. Coming in at number 4 we have Nancy's father in A Night Round Elm Street. We're all familiar with the plot of A Night Round Elm Street. Four teenagers from Springwood, Ohio are tormented by a vicious killer who invades their dreams. The movie was released back in 1984 and was directed by the incomparable Wes Craven, with it paving the way for subsequent sequels and sparking a hugely successful franchise. However, the question many fans of this series have is why Nancy Thompson is targeted so intensely by Freddy. We have the backstory of the parents of Springwood and what they did to Freddy, but why specifically Nancy? Well, it has been theorised that Nancy is the daughter of Freddy Krueger. Crazy, but hear me out. Fans of the franchise will know that the movie often takes us back to Nancy's home from the first movie, with it almost hinting to the fact that Freddy has a special bond with it. Not just that, but we also know that Marge Thompson, Nancy's mother, kept Freddy's bladed glove in the furnace in her basement. Why would she keep a memento like this from a deranged killer? We know she was involved in the murder of Freddy, but still it doesn't quite explain why she would want to hold on to something like that. Unless of course she has an attachment to Freddy, that being that he is Nancy's father. Coming in at number 3 we have the origin of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre family. Now there's a lot of real life history that inspired the creation of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now I'm sure most of you will know, but for those who don't, I'll brush over it quickly. Way back in 1968, Ed Gein was convicted of murder and was subsequently dubbed the Butcher of Plainfield. He would take corpses from cemeteries and would then use the skin and bones to create incredibly disturbing trophies, whether it be lampshades, chairs, bowls, etc. It all came from a human body. So what does this have to do with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Well, it'll all link together shortly. Released in 1974 and directed by Toby Hooper, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre follows a group of friends who fall victim to a family of cannibals while on their way to visit an old homestead. In this family is Leatherface, a chainsaw wielding killer who was modelled after Ed Gein himself. Now the theory goes that the officers who investigated the Leatherface murders were driven mad by what they discovered, with them ultimately going on to recreate the murders themselves. Now this actually makes a whole lot of sense and also explains why the family never went on to get caught, and why in the 2003 version of the movie R. Lee Ermey played a sheriff who was an accomplice to all the murders. It all ties together perfectly. Coming in at number 2 we have the source of all evil. Now this point centres solely around the Necronomicon, aka the Book of the Dead. The Necronomicon is a fictional book first referenced by everyone's favourite horror author H.P. Lovecraft back in 1924 in the short story The Hound. Over the years many people have believed the Necronomicon to be real, with booksellers receiving many requests for it, however it is indeed a work of fiction. As most horror fans will know, the Necronomicon appeared in the Evil Dead as a major plot point, with its name 
name being changed ever so slightly to the Necronomicon Ex Mortis, a book bound in flesh and written in human blood. It contains spells and incantations and has the ability to control both the dead and deadites, as well as summon the demon Kandarian. However, eagle eyed horror fans may have also noticed the Necronomicon in other places, particularly in A Nightmare on Elm Street, where Nancy was seen watching the Evil Dead. To come full circle, in The Evil Dead 2, Freddy Krueger's bladed glove was spotted in the background of the cabin. With many theorising that Dream Demons gave Freddy his powers from the book, which also gave Jason Voorhees his powers. This is confirmed after the book was found in his home in Jason Goes to Hell the final Friday. And then of course Freddy and Jason united for the movie Freddy vs Jason, not only confirming that these movies were all connected, but that a lot of our favourite horror characters got their powers from the same place. The Necronomicon. And finally, coming in at number one, we have All Horror Films Are Connected. This theory may not be new to a lot of you, it's not new for me either. I believe I may have discussed it last year or the year before, but still interesting nonetheless. Now, this all comes together in the movie Bride of Chucky. Released in 1998 and directed by Ronnie Yu, Bride of Chucky is a black comedy slasher and the fourth installment in the Child's Play franchise, with the movie starring the likes of Jennifer Tilly, Brad Dourif, Johnny Ritter, Katherine Heigl, and Nick Stable, with the movie itself following Chucky and Tiffany, two possessed dolls who head to New Jersey to look for Chucky's amulet that can help them both regain their human forms. Now, unlike the movie's predecessors in the franchise, Bride of Chucky took a sharp turn towards self referential parody. Now, without giving the ending of the movie away, there is one particular moment in Bride of Chucky where an evidence locker is opened up, revealing to the audience Michael Myers' mask, Freddy Krueger's glove, Jason's hockey mask, and Leatherface's chainsaw. These are all listed as unresolved, as we know when the initial Halloween franchise ended, Michael Myers was decapitated. In Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger finally died. In Friday the 13th, Jason also met his end. And the last time we saw Leatherface, he had let a victim escape, which we can assume led to his death or at least his escape, considering all of these cases are labelled as unresolved. Ultimately, this moment hints to us quite aggressively that all these horror movies are connected in some way or another and exist within the same universe, which is pretty damn cool. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with that list? Were there any horror movies that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below and perhaps we can do a part 2. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos, Top 5 Scariest Sci-Fi Horror Movies. Ambi said, I'm with you, I love Alien but I think Aliens is even better. Exactly. I mean I know I'm right but I'm just trying to please you guys by giving you what you want which is Alien over Aliens but I know Aliens is better and we all know it. Someone put it well which was, it's like liking Terminator 2 better than Terminator and I agree, Terminator 2 is the better one. It's the same thing. Ancestor Empire said, It's always going to be a toss up between the thing and alien. Ain't that the truth? At the end of the day, I think I'd pick the thing. But on that list, I put it second, so what am I even talking about? I lie to all of you and I lie to myself every day. Sorry. NA Parry said, A fine list. How good to see Lucy is back in the studio in all her gesticulating, arm waving glory. I genuinely mean that as a compliment. I did get a lot of comments because before I was filming on my bed where you couldn't see my arms, but now I'm back. And I'm here to wave around. Raythulu said, 719 totally won't get clipped and looped. So yeah, 719 I said, come for me. I didn't mean it like come for me. I meant it like, you want to fight? Come for me. I say it quite often, but now I'm starting to realise that people may misinterpret that all the time. I think it might be a British thing. <laughs> Because I was like, Charlie's, I love Charlie's Theron, I liked Prometheus, come for me, like fight me, you wanna go, let's go. But uh, you all misinterpreted that as come for me. Please don't. <laughs> Christopher Mendes said, two glorious returns. Lucy is back in the studio and the turtleneck is back, the Dark Queen in all her gorgeous glory. Thank you, I am back, I'm very happy. I don't have the turtleneck on today though. I wanted to free the neck. Like free the nips, but free the neck. <laughs> US Lethal said at first I was like, Event Horizon at the bottom of the list? Not a good start, Lucy, but then the following listings were damn near perfect. Well done, also Team Aliens. Thank you for being on my side. Um, thank you for loving me. <laughs> I don't know. I'll put anything wherever I want it to go and you'll be happy with it. That's what I'm gonna say. Event Horizon can be up. Calm down. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And until next time, I'll see you later. Come for me. <laughs> drunk driving, drunk driving. How many more times I can say it? <laughs> I don't know. So. <laughs> I thought you were going to add something real quick. I don't know. My body acted on its own. I didn't even know I was going to clap. <laughs> As most horror fans will know, the Necronicon. So slightly to the Necronicon.
my god, I'm having a hard time. End of story. Weird names. It's like someone put it well, which is. Am I okay? So, 